Hello guys, I am back. This time it is not a super turbo heads up. This time it is just a turbo heads up. So there should be a lot more play. I should be able to talk at a very normal pace instead of feeling so rushed. I feel like the pace of this would actually probably be a lot better for discussion, for me really getting my thoughts out, being able to talk about all this stuff. So I look to be doing a lot more of these in the future of just the turbo ones, not the super turbos. I figured out how to post videos that are longer than 15 minutes so I can do the whole thing in one video so it's not broken up. I'm really excited about that. So I really hope to do a lot more of these than the Super Turbos um, just because I, I think it'll be a much better video. Um, the Super Turbos, I, I just my thoughts are all scattered. I can't get a thought out before I have to deal with the next decision. and So I think the pace of these will be a lot better. Um, I'm playing against Tim Garbaggio. I don't know who this guy is. Um, I can do a little continuation bet here. So yeah, there'll be more of a meta game to kind of be a part of and to kind of figure out what the other player is doing. So yeah, I'm excited about doing these and uh, being able to record longer videos. So, and you know, skills going to win these more often than the other ones. The other ones have a lot more luck involved. So because the stacks are just so short and there's just not a lot of time to really do much. So we'll see. Um, not much happening so far. Uh, strategy still stays the same, in my opinion. You have a little bit more room to maneuver. Um, like right here, I'm gonna three bet, and I don't feel forced to do. You know, to have to um, to call a, a big raise. You know, when in the other ones, it would get to the point where you'd have to call a pretty big raise pretty soon if you were gonna three bet somebody. I don't love this flop. I feel like there's a lot of stuff he could have hit, but if he missed, I feel like he pretty much has to get out of the way. Which is one of the things I love about 3-betting, especially out of position, is if they do call, you can just fire out a bet, and if they missed, it's really hard for them to keep going. Uh, it's really scary to just stand up to somebody in that spot. So, I really like that. Um, here I'm actually going to just call. I don't want to get 4-bet. And, you know, I don't want to 3-bet him too much too early when it's not as important. Um, again, I want to play in position, but it's pretty small right now. Um, I'm just going to try to keep... Uh, I probably could have bet that out. Um, take kind of control of the pot. Um, although, actually, I kind of like check raising. Uh, do I like check raising? No, I just want to see a cheap card. That wasn't the card I wanted, but that's okay. Um, I think I'm going to bet out here, though. Looks like I could have hit something. And uh, I can kind of control the bet size here a little bit by making that. Although I probably should have made it a little bit smaller, to be honest. Um, and now I, I can just check, because I've probably lost. Um, and I know not to bluff on the river, because what is he going to that deuce isn't going to make him afraid of anything. So if he thinks he won on the turn, he's going to think he won on the river. So my thought process in that hand went each direction a bunch of times, which is not what you want to do. Um, I probably didn't play this hand very well because my plan kind of shifted so many times. It's an example of how not to do something. Um, your, your plan can obviously shift depending on what happens with the board, but I mean my overall philosophy for the hand if you want to say it that way shifted way too many times there of how I wanted to play it um, and, and that's just going to get you into trouble if you if you always deal with hands like that so something I needed to improve on and just get a little bit more solid with uh, kind of my plan for, for the overall hand here I can easily just get away it's a pretty big 3 bet and my hand was really bad well really bad to play against a 3 bet I'll put it that way um Again, my hand is good. I mean, I probably three bet with hand weaker or hand stronger than this. Um, but I don't want to. I'm going to check because I feel it's probably going to continuation bet. And I can probably pick up a continuation bet by check raising him. Instead of just betting out, he's probably just going to fold. Now he might have an ace or a seven, 
but I'm kind of playing thinking I have the best hand. And now if he has a better ace than me, it doesn't really matter unless it's ace king or ace seven. Um, because my eight no longer plays. So I can I can be pretty aggressive here. Um, and, and that check raise it could he it probably won't unless I really made big bets. But if he has an ace, he's gotta be a little concerned about the seven. And I, the only thing, I don't think anything really beats me here. Um, I think anything that beats me, he probably would have played it a little bit differently. A seven, I don't see him playing. I think, yeah, it's going to be a split. But, you know, if he had a seven there, um, I don't think he would have just called my bet on the turn. Or, or, or I don't know exactly how he would have played it, but the way he's playing it really did not make me think he had a seven in his hand. Now, heads up. There's almost always a, some sort of possibility that someone's doing something a little tricky along those lines. Um, hand ranges become a lot wider, which is actually hard for me. I like the full ring and the six max because um, I feel like I got hand ranges down a lot better. Heads up, my I, I it's kind of, with wide hand ranges I don't play nearly as well. Um, that's why I'm not a great cash game player in my mind. Because uh, hand ranges are much wider, and there's, I have a harder time distinguishing because of that. But, um, and heads up, they're wider too. So I don't think my heads up game is as strong as my nine max game. But I think at these lower limits, I don't know if I mentioned this is a twenty-three dollar tournament. Um, I'm just gonna get out of the way there. So at these lower limits, I still think I have a good enough heads up game to beat them. Um, yeah, we got three bet again. He's been calling all of my three bets, though, if you haven't noticed. So that's something, you know, I need to keep my eye on. Um, which isn't a terrible way to defend against three bets. Because I'm not making huge three bets. And it does give me control, but he has position on me. So he's got a four bet. Um... He hasn't done this yet. And I could shove on him. I do have the kind of hand that I can do that with. And I think I'm going to because I have that kind of hand. Another pair is pretty unlikely. And even if he has sevens or eights, that's a scary bet right there. You know, so he has to have a really good hand. And honestly, a hand like aces, kings, I don't know if he's going to play it quite like that. Is he really going to make a small 4-bet with aces there, trying to get me to shove? I think that 4-bet is trying to show more strength than um, what aces would do. Aces would be afraid of trying to show so much strength like that. Aces would, I would think, would try to just call or shove. You know, maybe there's more likely to do it with kings because you don't want the ace to hit. But again, are, are you going all in or are you making that smallish kind of 4-bet? So... I was thinking, you know, his hand probably isn't the very top of the range. And, you know, those middle pairs, good chance he's going to call me with them. But I might be able to get some of those out, with this, which is huge. And you know, if he's got this, a lot of times I'm going to be um, flipping or even getting two overcards to fold a lot is pretty huge there. So... Although it's a risky play, a high variance play, I thought it was the right play. It gave me a little bit of an edge. Um, probably make him a little bit less likely to four bet me again, which is always nice. I'm um, standing up a little bit, and you know you got to be able to make plays like that. I don't think it's an amazing play, but I was happy I was able to do it. I often cower in situations like that where it's close. I just go, I'll go with the safe play. But I mean, that was a situation where I could have, I could have. Called, folded, or raised. Or fold, called, or raised is the way to say it. But he's been raising on the button quite a bit, um, which is good to keep an eye on with how often they do that. I haven't really been picking any hands. Now I have a small edge, but it's. He's been raising a lot and I can't get anything. Um, I have a small edge, but it's not a huge deal at this point. I'm going to raise, partly just because I haven't raised in quite a while. Um, 
I think I'll give it a little bit more respect. Although, I probably should raise a little bit more. And he's going to re-raise me again. Okay. So I don't know if he's stepping up his aggression or if he's getting cards or he's noticed I folded a lot recently. So I don't know what exactly is going on. The reason I'm folding that is just out of position. I don't want to play it out of position. Out of hand like that. I don't want to re bet with it. Um... So, I mean, he won seven hands in a row or something, but the blinds are so small, it's not a huge deal. Um, yeah, he picked up maybe 100 chips on me or something, but I've been playing a lot of garbage hands. Um, here I'm going to call. I'm going to, you know, I, I want to show him I'm capable of, of not letting him just completely min bet me out of every pot. I don't want to him to think that. Um, I do have a gut shot, but I don't think a bet's going to really represent anything here. I think his range is quite a bit better than where I'm at. So I'm probably starting to play a little too passive. And I think he's trying to pick up on that. And, um, you know, he's been three betting my raises a decent amount. He's been um, here. That bet looks so much less like a continuation bet, um, but I kind of almost still have to make it because, you know, if I let anything come, you know, you could easily hit it. So I don't really like these spots because I feel like Having a four doesn't really change anything unless I hit something like two pair. Um, so here I'm just trying to kind of extract value. I mean, the hand kind of changes with me hitting two pair. Um, and he called on the flop, so I'm figuring he has something. So I'm going to make some small bets, hoping to kind of keep him around. Yeah, 150 is about good. Maybe a little bit less. But this is a pretty strong hand. I mean, if he's got me beat, he's got me beat at this point. But when he calls the flop, he probably has something. Maybe it's just a five, maybe it's just a four. Um, and that's why I feel like I probably should have, okay, he's going to raise me. I'm going to just call. I'm trying to induce him to, to shove it on the river. I'm not really afraid of much coming. I guess a five or a queen are pretty bad. Um... Uh, five or a queen's pretty bad. Diamond's not great. So yeah, I think I'm gonna shove because there's quite a few cards I don't want to see. There's lots of strades out there, so I might as well make him pay for it if he's gonna go for it. And he just has a worse king. Than me. So that was actually pretty weird play by him. Um, but anyways, I won. Um, See if there's a rematch, if there's a rematch, I'll do another video. Yeah, okay. So I'll have a rematch. I'll record that one if it's any good. I'll, I'll post that one too. But I like this one. I'll probably post it. And I'll see you guys next time.